Welcome to the tutorial drawing using the polyline tool. In this tutorial I'm going to continue to clean up the front view sketch of the cartoon rabbit but this time using the polyline tool. So to access the polyline tool go to the tools toolbar and hold down the line tool icon. You'll notice that the polyline tool is the last menu item in the list. You can either select it from this list or you can use the keyboard shortcut option P on Mac or Alt P in Windows. So let's begin to trace. So as you start drawing you might notice that the line that you're making is a bit too thick. As you can see here it doesn't match up with the lines that have been previously drawn. So what you can do is go to the pencil style drop down list and choose one of the other default pencil styles and continue drawing. The nice thing about this program or what's different than some than a program like Illustrator is that once you choose a different pencil width um, which ha occurred as soon as we changed uh, pencil styles here the path doesn't automatically change to that new pencil width. You can have a line of one width and then have a line of another width along the same path. However the moment that you click off the path and then select it again, you'll see that these this path has now actually been cut into two separate parts. But you don't have to worry about this too much because as long as the shape is closed, um, even if these two lines are disconnected, you'll still be able to fill the shape with color. So that's not an actual worry. And this is actually kind of a nice feature as well because if you're, say, drawing um, the clothing of a character with a thicker line and then you want to switch to a thinner line to do its hands or its neck or face, you can do that easily without worrying about the entire line transforming to a, a different width. But in my case, I'd like a single width and I'd actually like to match this width here. So I'm going to delete these two lines. And I'm going to pick uh, pencil line 6 and continue drawing. So some of these weird bumps here, I would actually probably stop right away and correct with the contour editor tool. But in this case, I'm going to keep drawing and draw the entire character and then go back and fix these, uh, these things later in, a, in another tutorial. So as I bring my cursor to um, the first point that I drew, you'll see that there's a plus sign. And what that means is that as soon as I click and continue this path, um, this path is now a closed shape, and you can see that by the red dot here. But unlike programs like Illustrator, there still are two points that exist. It doesn't connect it um, physically as one shape, but the red dot allows you to know that this is a closed shape for coloring. And in fact, you can still continue um, drawing with the, with the same continuous line, um, unlike Illustrator where once it's a closed shape, it's almost like it detaches and the next point you draw would start a completely different shape. So this might be a good point um, in the tutorial to show you some of the options in the Tool Properties panel, the first one being Snap to Contour. So I'm going to turn that on, and what that's going to do is as I bring my pen towards another contour line um, in, you know, nearby or somewhere in the drawing space, a white circle appears beside um, the polyline tool cursor. And what that allows me to know is that when I click down there, I'm going to know for sure that this point has snapped to a place on the contour here, which means that once again, this is a closed shape and perfect for filling with color. Um, if you don't have that snap to point and you draw a point or you click where you think is um, overlapping with this other line, um, you might find out later as you start coloring that in fact those lines are touching and then this shape area is not fillable. Um, so that's a good, good reason to use the snap to contour option. So what we can do at this point, because this red dot is still activated, if I want to start drawing over here now, what's going to happen is that this line is going to cross the collar, which is what I don't want. I actually want to detach this, um, kind of detach myself from this point and start drawing again from this side of the collar. So I'm going to undo that. And what I can do is momentarily bring up the select tool by clicking the keyboard shortcut V, clicking somewhere in the white space, 
and now restarting my line. So I sort of deactivated that red point that was active. So now I can start with the red line here. And unlike Illustrator, you don't really need a closed shape to fill color. So here, this looks like, for a lot of people who are used to using Illustrator, an, an incomplete shape that this will not fill with color, but in fact it will because it is touching the lines of this color here. And at any point, if there's some type of a gap or whatever, we can show you how to close that later on. So basically draw um, in a way where you would have your lines touching Another way to detach your lines to let you know as well, besides using uh, the select tool to click away from your line, is to actually go back over the point you were drawing. So you see an X that appears beside the cursor of the pen tool. So as soon as I click down there, the next point I'm about to draw will no longer be a continuation of that point, but it'll start a new path like that. Like that. Which is good to know. I'm just going to finish up the belt here. Um, so that's it for the tutorial drawing using the polyline tool. I'm going to show you how to clean this up using the contour editor tool if you stay tuned for the next tutorial reshaping a drawing using the contour editor tool.